The nation chief speaks out on crime. Coming up, find out more. Hear more on the new immigration policy and how some students will be affected. 14 person of the year is attributed to a major cause. Clint Watson, find out who he is ahead in the Bahamas tonight. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The nation's chief says the greatest threat to the Bahamas' economic viability this year is crime. Good evening, everyone. I'm Charisma Robinson. And I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. The country's leader says despite an 18% drop in overall crime last year, serious crimes increased by 3%. His comments came at the opening of the Bahamas Business Outlook Seminar. As he looked at the crime stats, he outlined measures to address what he feels are the underlying issues. Clint Watson reports. I find the level of crime unacceptable to me. Passionate and relentless that more must still be done, Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie outlined to the business community at Business Outlook the strategies for 2015 that his administration will engage in to shore up what's already being done. Saturation patrols in crime hotspots and more community policing will be expanded along with the broader use of closed-circuit television cameras and increased support to better equip law enforcement, social services, and the judiciary. We have a situation that has been fed by too many people being let out on bail charged with murder. And that has come about because the courts have the deemed constitutionally that if you cannot try someone in three years, they have a constitutional right to their freedom. As a result of that, what we have seen is statistically, we have seen many of these people come out and they're either killed or they kill. That in itself leads to, to the jurists an opportunity for them to review to determine whether that is sufficient to cause them to read some other tenets into the law. With this in mind, Mr. Christie noted that the rationale behind the creation of 10 new criminal courts is to address a backlog and long wait for trial. We also amended the jury's law to be able to bring jurists in from the islands if necessary in terms of jury selection, sparing no expense. We are in the process of appointing a new chief justice. The constitutional framework exists and I have initiated the process and therefore, Sir Michael Barnett, as he retires, we will have a new Chief Justice in place imminently. I expect, therefore, to have a renewed focus on the administration of justice. I expect there to be operating courts that will enable us to effectively secure our country. Another class of 60 police officers will graduate next month. Mr. Christie says the expectation is for the country to be safe and secured with all of these new and increased measures added to the fight against crime. We cannot afford to continue to have crime advisories telling people they must be careful where they walk in the Bahamas. The Prime Minister says although the government will continue to do what it can to make the Bahamas safe, he noted that it will also require sustained effort by all stakeholders, including the government, church, NGOs, education institutions, and families. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. From the courts, 25-year-old Emmanuel Roll was charged today with the recent murder of Defense Force Marine Angelo Dorset back on Sunday, January 25th. He's also facing two attempted murder charges and causing public terror by discharging a firearm while at the G-Spot Club. The charges stem from an incident that unfolded during the early morning hours when a fight broke out involving several men. Authorities say three of them left the bar, threatening to return. One of the males reportedly came back and fired several shots, which hit Dorset in the back and another man in his stomach. In court, bail was denied and Roll was remanded to prison. He returns to court on March 15th. Also, a female resident of Long Island was arraigned today on a charge of murder and robbery. 47-year-old Daphne Knowles of Cartwright's Long Island was charged with the murder of Andrea Carroll between November 28th and 29th of last year.
Carroll was found dead and tied to a fan in her home in Deadman's Key. Knowles was also accused of robbing Carroll of $68,000 cash, the property of which was Bo's web game. Knowles was also charged with conspiring with others to commit robbery. Bail was denied and Knowles was remanded. Following the arraignment, Knowles asked the court where are the other people that she is accused of conspiring with to commit the robbery? She also wanted to know where the money was that she is accused of stealing. However, Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt informed Knowles that those were evidential matters the Crown will have to prove against her. The case was adjourned to March 1st for service of voluntary bill of indictment papers. Knowles did not have a lawyer at that time. Breaking news coming in right now. Senior Justice Hartman Longley is to be sworn in as Chief Justice on Monday. We just got this news just in. Justice Longley has had a long legal career after being appointed to the bench in 1992. He served as a senior justice in Grand Bahama and he was a longtime partner in the leading law firm of Evans & Co. Senior Justice Longley will be sworn in as a Chief Justice, as the Chief Justice, pardon me, during a ceremony at Government House on Monday. New immigration policy to impact foreign students in the Bahamas will take effect this coming month. This comes as government continues with its new initiatives to address the current illegal migration problem in the Bahamas. While addressing the 2015 Business Outlook Forum Thursday, Minister of Immigration and Foreign Affairs Fred Mitchell announced new requirements for non-Bahamian students. So in immigration, new rules are going to be introduced. For example, all schools will be asked to be sure that any foreign national in a Bahamian school has a student permit to be in the Bahamas as of the opening of the fall term. The annual permit now costs $25 with a processing fee of $100. And every non-national should have one now. But we're saying, OK, the fall of this year, including those born to non-national parents in the Bahamas. Now changes are also expected to be made on work permit applications. In a few months, we hope to attach, and I'm just throwing this out for public discussion, I did so in several town meetings in Abaco, conditions to the work permits, and this is, is presently allowed by the law, which will say that if you get a work permit, you have to have evidence that the worker you are hiring has health insurance for that worker, and you are providing adequate housing. And if you cannot demonstrate that, then the work permit will not be granted. This is being put out for discussion, but I mean to bring it to some conclusion. None of these policies, however, can be successful if they do not have the broad support of the Bahamian people. It is for like this, in for like this, that we look and seek support. We think that immigration reform is underway, and we look forward to serving the public in the national interest. As government navigates a new immigration policy, opponents, supporters, and concerned citizens turned out to the Bahamas Bar Association to hear from some of the leading voices on the controversial issue. And as Jared Higgs tells us tonight, he tells us about the panel, which also featured a Bahamian forefather and a prominent human rights attorney. Former Minister of Immigration Loftus Roker and Fred Smith stand at opposite ends of the immigration issue. Mr. Roker is known for his tough stance on immigration, even when pressured from within his party. And Fred Smith, a Queen's counsel and attorney with a strong passion for human rights, were both part of a panel discussion on immigrant communities hosted by the Bahamas Bar Association. If they were breaking the law, they were breaking law, they were breaking law and I would send them back. And if it happened today, I would do the same thing. What do you want me to do? Do you? Which law should we break? And which law shouldn't we break? We should uphold all the laws. And if we don't like a law, we change it. We are not dealing with individuals, individual applications on their own merits. That is why we have a court system. That is why the Constitution gives rights individually. That is why in the United States and throughout the British Commonwealth, we have something called due process. Recently appointed Queen's Counsel Wayne Monroe and College of the Bahamas Professor Felix Bethel also contributed to the panel offering differing views on the principle of how to treat outsiders. But in the Old Testament, when the children of Israel were going into the Promised Land, God was quite clear about it. You're very careful about the strangers that you permit amongst you. And that's biblical. 
and that has not changed. We are called to embrace the stranger so that he is stranger no more. That when we entertain strangers, we may be entertaining angels unaware. Rounding off the panel was Luby George, a radio personality born in the Bahamas to Haitian parents during the Roca era. His family eventually moved back to Haiti when he was an infant and later returned to the Bahamas where he attended school. He reflects on what it was like growing up. Imagine every number of problems Bahamians claim to have and then divide that, or times that, sorry, times that by 20. Times that by 20. Bahamians cry every day and Haitians cry every day, but times the Bahamian problems by 20. And then, and maybe then, you would grab an understanding as to what we go through or had to go through. Meantime, Attorney Smith commended Mr. Roker on what he described as a lawful, although inflexible, execution of immigration policy. More on this panel discussion in later newscasts. Jared Higgs, ZNS Network News. Hear why a number of Cable Bahamas employees didn't show up for work today. To move a bus stop in the city center, could that decision be changed? That story coming up in the Bahamas tonight. This is brought to you by Shell Quality Fuels.